We are staying alive with episode 185 today. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about how to make yourself more valuable in the workplace or any organization. Not that I don't think you're already worth something. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So when you talk about the idea of worth, what are you worth in the marketplace? You know, you back that up for a second, and I think that we all believe that a person is worth a lot. And if you don't think that a person or a life or a human is worth a lot, um, I would suggest something's broken. There's some hurt there. And I would also suggest that this probably isn't the best podcast for you. You might be disappointed. But, but moving along, we all have this inherent value as a human, right? We contribute. Um, we are a person. We have thoughts and feelings and emotions. And then we think about talent. And when we think about talent, you start to think about why other people would find value in what you can produce. And obviously that moves into the world of commerce and into the workplace where there's a constant measure of value or ROI from a business standpoint saying, if I pay you a certain amount of money or give you some benefits, I expect a certain level of value to come back to the organization so that the organization can make a profit and hire more people and serve the community and do all the things that we think are valuable and important in life. However, there's always this constant measurement going, what is this person worth? And on the other side, you, the person, the, the employee making this value, like what is it worth for me to be here? So I wanna talk a, a little bit today, a little more tactical maybe than usual, but I think very practical also is how do you become more valuable to an organization? And we'll probably also, yes, we definitely will get around to how an organization can make themselves more beneficial to their team members. So we're gonna approach this from both angles. So let me start from the individual uh, mindset because I always like to talk about what it is that you can control. What can you do? It's easy to blame. It's easy um, to have hurt feelings and let that control everything that you do. But when it all comes down to it, it's like, what do we decide to do with ourselves? What do we decide to take responsibility for? And like my good buddy Jocko says, it's all your fault. Meaning that when you adopt the, the mindset that like, hey, it's my fault. So if it's my fault, that means that I can change it. And when it's not my fault or somebody else's fault or someone's doing it to me, then I actually just take all the power I have over a situation. And on top of feeling bad, I give them all of my power as well. That's a totally another other subject. But starting back to how can you make yourself more valuable to an organization? It starts with you taking responsibility for what's in your wheelhouse. Now, sure, there should be a job description. There should be a, a relatively clear expectation for what it is that you are hired to do, what it is that you are supposed to contribute in order to exchange what it is you're getting in compensation. That is not... That does make you valuable, obviously, or you wouldn't have been higher, but that does not make you valuable in a way where you are guaranteed growth, guaranteed pay increases, guaranteed um, continued employment. That doesn't cut it because times change, the climate changes, organizations as they move forward get more complex. They rarely, rarely, rarely get more simple. That means if you want to grow with the organization, you also have to be thinking, how can I be more of a team player? I call this person an athlete. Let me explain that one. So an athlete, someone who is just in shape, some, I'm metaphorically speaking, someone who is in shape, someone who does the work to be conditioned off the field so when they get on the field, they can actually play. An athlete is the person that maybe they're really good at one sport, but when someone's an athlete, you can throw them in just about any sport and they can perform with some level of competency because they're in shape, they're fit, they've done the work, they've done the mental work, they know how to handle themselves, they know how to be aware of what's going on around them and not just live in this myopic view of the immediate and the now. So as a team member that works in someone else's organization or a nonprofit or whatever it is, work with a group of people, think about it in the sense of, am I an athlete? Am I able to not only do this job really well, but to really understand everyone else's job and understand the whole landscape 
of business and the organization. That's why I love what Donald Miller is doing so much in Business Made Simple. He's saying, hey, take these courses and if you can understand these principles of business, I don't care what degree you have, you understand these principles, you can be far more effective at whatever it is you're doing because you understand the whole landscape. I believe in that principle. I just started a company, co-founded a company called Contagious Auto that's built on that principle. So as you, whatever job you have, whatever you're doing for vocation, look around and say, am I doing the work to actually get better when I'm not punched in and punched out? Because someone that just punches in and punches out and leaves and forget it, guess what? You should never be surprised that you're not advancing fast in your career. Pick up a book, watch a webinar right? These are available. Study your industry a little bit. Just subscribe to some email lists. You don't have to do a ton, but start by doing a little. And if you put some time, energy, and attention into how can you improve your skill sets, how can you improve and be more of an athlete, your opportunity is going to skyrocket. And I want to see that happen. It's because you can say, oh, well, I'm valuable to this team because I do all these things and I understand all these things at least. Even if I do this one thing, I understand what happens with it when I pass it to the next person and they pass it to the next person and it eventually gets to the client or the customer. When you understand those things, you inherently become more valuable and guess what? You can, in work, in business, you can compensate it in two ways, mainly money and benefits. We'll put those in there. Money and authority. When it comes time for promotion or leadership opportunities or stepping up into another role, Guess who's going to get tapped on the shoulder if you are an athlete? You are. You are. Not only vertically, say you're, um, I don't know, say you're a designer, better designer, but all of a sudden you might be leading a team if that's what you want to do. You might end up as a VP. You might end up as a partner. Why? Because you're an athlete and you think that way. On the other side, I want to speak to all the executives, all the leaders, all the business owners out there. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a bit of a labor shortage going on right now. You'll find out eventually if you haven't already. The thing is exactly the same. Taking ownership as an organization and as a leadership team saying, how can I become more valuable to my team members? Back in the day, old school thinking, it's like you show up, you do what I say because I pay you the money, right? Old school automotive, they're like, it's the 30-15 rule. Heard it like the 20-40 rule, whatever. Oh, you have a question? Great. Go out the front door, walk 30 feet, and then look 15 feet in the air. Whose name's on that sign? Ooh, that's old school. That doesn't work anymore. You're going to be cycling through crappy employees the rest of your business career. So for executives, how can you, leaders, small business owners, how can you become more valuable to your team? Again, you need to think more holistically than I'm the one that signs the payroll checks. Because guess what? There are a lot of people out there also signing payroll checks. This starts with listening and paying attention to the needs of your people. Even simple things, like what makes it more comfortable for them to work? What gives them flexibility to do the things in their life that they find meaningful outside of their job? Yes, people find things meaningful outside of their job. How can you encourage that? How can you give flexibility? How can you bring uh, emotional support and energy, right? I talk about brand, that's the feeling that people get. Their job, you as an employer are a brand. What feeling are you giving the people every morning? Do they know you care about them? Do you really care about them? So that's the quick hit for today. Again, a little more tactical and a little practical, actually a lot practical in this day and age. And my hope is that through just listening to some of these things, you will have perspective immediately. This is about where I am, right? I'm mailing it in every day, or maybe I'm on the path and I'm growing and I'm doing, or maybe there's a few things that I want to do that are going to make me more of an athlete to make me more valuable so that I can step forward in my career, I can grow my company, I can do the things that lead to providing for all the things that I want in life. And that can be this, that can be this, it doesn't matter, I'm not saying one's better than the other. But don't we all just wanna feel better about what we're doing? Don't we all want just more fulfillment? I do. I'm glad you spent some time with me today. I hope it brought you a little bit of fulfillment and I hope you move forward from this moment forward, working to be more valuable to the people around you because guess what? It does come around. I will see you next week. We came to fight.